Boston Landmarks Orchestra season is now underway with several more free concerts planned for the weeks ahead. The orchestra's mission to build community through great music and to showcase a diversity of music and cultures. The programming spotlights underrepresented composers and artists. Joining us now is music director Christopher Wilkins and three-time Grammy award-winning drummer, composer, producer, and educator Terry Lynn Carrington. Christopher Welcome. Landmark celebrates Boston's diverse culture and history. So explain uh, for us, if you would, how music plays a role in building community. Well, we literally give voice to Bostonians. So we collaborate with everybody under the sun, everybody we can think of. We've worked with institutions. We've worked with summer camps. We've worked with music programs who work in the neighborhoods. And through that, we develop partnerships, ideally, the people that we're collaborating with then come to the Hat Shell or to whatever venue in various neighborhoods of Boston that we're performing and perform with us. So that's what I call a strategy of, of participation, which is kind of our hallmark. That's great. Terry Lynn, you are partnering with Landmarks for a concert ahead of the NAACP convention at the end of the month. How did this partnership uh, develop? The, the concert's called Seen Unseen. Uh, let's watch a little of a short film uh, that you made about it. What we need. What we need. What we need. What we need. All things. All things. Seen, seen and, unseen, and unseen. Purposeful. Purposeful. And driven, and driven by hope for the dream. A most powerful thing. Our truths. Our burdens. Our wisdom and strength. Our commitment to the ancestors our connection ever present within each breath. It's about the symphonic legacy of black American women. How are these artists unseen and what inspired this piece and talk about the partnership. Well, I think uh, David House from Arts Emerson introduced uh, Chris and Arthur to me and um, I'm happy to be able to perform with them and to perform my piece, Seen Unseen which has only been performed, I think, about four times. Uh, first, it was originally commissioned by MIT, uh, Fred Harris at MIT. And then we performed it at SF Jazz and uh, in Detroit as well at the Carr Center. So this is about the fourth time. Uh, and it's about the journey of Black women and how how we're seen in some ways, you know, physically and stereotypically, but also how our humanity is sometimes unseen. And that's the focus of the piece, basically. Now, Terry Lynn, you chose Mary Lou Williams to be one of the included composers. What makes her work so significant? Well, Mary Lou Williams was one of the greatest pianists and composers that the music has seen. And she also uh, was a bit unseen, actually. And uh, she did this piece and she didn't have the reviews and the support that she deserved or wanted. So she went to Europe and uh, kind of stayed there for a couple of years. And I think that this piece, uh, her Zodiac Suite was ahead of her time. And uh, I think it's great whenever we can shine a light on the brilliance and genius of Mary Lou Williams. Christopher, how did you choose the other female uh, composers for this performance? Well. The curious thing is that we, you know, we have over a century of great works by black American women, and most orchestras don't perform any of it. And uh, most people like me, who grew up in this field, didn't grow up knowing any of it. So we really are offering a tiny sampling of what's out there. But I chose them really for two reasons. One was to give an idea of the quality and variety of the works. And kind of in keeping with seen unseen, almost all of these pieces have something to do with the I identification of the, these particular works composers through music with their own personal experience. So we don't have symphony number no. four or study for orchestra. These are pieces called Voices Shouting Out and Shirley Graham's Tom Tom, which is very much about the Pan-African movement that she got involved with. She 
later married W.E.B. Du Bois. But um, it's just a tiny sampling, but I think a, a nice representation of, of all that we've been missing. There's a lot of history there. Terry Lynn talking about history. You started your professional career in Boston, and at age 10, you were the youngest person to receive a union card. You attended Berklee College of Music, where you now currently serve as the founder and artistic director of the Institute of Jazz and Gender Justice. What is the Institute's mission? Well, um, we are really trying to make as strong an impact as we can on uh, the entire community, um, the Berkeley community, of course, and we live in Massachusetts, so the Boston community and surrounding areas, but uh, also the entire jazz community, because uh, you know women and non-binary musicians have not been treated fairly, and there's uh, really not been enough support and resources um, and desire to have this kind of equity with the creators of the music, which is why one of our initiatives was to do a book New Standards, 101 Compositions by Women Composers. Um, so we're trying to affect, of course, the students in the next generation, but we're also trying to uh, get the entire community to look at their practices, whether it's um, how they purchase music or uh, who they buy tickets for, who they support, all those things. Well, you know, it's important to uh, point out that next month the orchestra will be performing the works of Mozart and Joseph Boulogne, the Chevalier de St. George. It's a movie about his life and was released this past spring. Boulogne was known as a musical genius, a violinist and classical composer in the 18th century France, but he was not often recognized in musical history. So we want to thank you, Chris, for uh, talking about some of this uh, performers uh, and featuring them. Why did you talk about the Chevalier. Why are you featuring the Chevalier de St. George? Okay. I don't know if we can hear uh, Chris, but I want to thank you and Terry Lynn both for joining us today. Check out a full list of free concert dates and locations for the Landmarks Orchestra on WCVB.com, including a day of family fun at Port Park in Chelsea. And WCVB is proud to be a sponsor of the Landmarks Orchestra. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at CityLine5. And you can follow me on Twitter at Karen Holmes Ward. Have a great afternoon.